All right, let's get into our next discussion. Cultism is a problem that is ravaging many schools and communities in Nigeria. A BBC Africa Eye report digs deep into the world and activities of a cult group that mainly operates in Nigeria. Now, I have uh, joining me BBC investigative reporter Peter Magjob joining me uh, via Zoom. Peter, it's good to have you join me this morning. Thank you. Great. Now, uh, talk to me generally. You, you grew up in Nigeria. You, you are familiar with the system here and all of that. Did you ever come across uh, the Black Axe or any of these members of, uh, you know, some of these groups generally? Can you share that with us? Yeah, um, I did have contact uh, in my time is in, you know, in school because, as you probably know, it's hard not to have contact. Uh, some of your closest friends were members of this cult. Like in my case, I had, I had people in my uh, course who were friends of mine, who belonged to one cult group or the other, and tried to endear me into joining this cult. Because when I was in school, my thing was, I you know, wanted to like have muscles and look tough and things like that. So there was quite uh, a couple of interests from rival cult groups that there was a lot of pressure, but also I had friends of mine who were battered, either because they got caught up in a love triangle with a member of a cult group that they didn't realize that they were in competition with a cultist and they got absolutely beaten up. And I mean, as you saw in the film, a friend of mine who I grew up with uh, got killed by what we believe was a rival cult. Hmm. Now, what about the Nigerian security agencies? Uh, what are they doing about all this? Because if you paint the picture, the way you have said people being falling victim of all of these uh, groups generally, what is the security agencies doing about this? It, I think that it's really complex because, first of all, uh, I get the impression the security agencies are over overwhelmed, you know, because these things are in plain sight and... The, the first question is always where are the security agencies were. Well, nobody seems to be able to find them because there's so much of these cultist uh, activities going on. But then on the other side, uh, over 90% of people who are victims of cultism make any reports. People don't necessarily go to the police station to say, I've been, a, I've been attacked by uh, a, a member of a cult, a black axe or, or an AA or whatever, because of the fear of reprisal. And even to make it worse, there's also the allegations that police officers, indeed members of the armed forces, as other spheres of the Nigerian society, are members of this cult, from the judiciary, even to the clergy. Hmm. Even to the clergy? Wow. Yeah. Right, now, uh, you spent time with these vigilante groups. Uh, share with us generally, what was the experience like? Uh, I had mixed feelings, hmm. actually. So initially, uh, obviously, it took two years to make this documentary. So there were things that we've uh, seen, documents that we've uh, uh, perused. And there was a part of me that was keen to go out with the vigilante to apprehend this uh, cultist. But the level of brutality that this vigilante group uh, put on this cultist, you, you, you couldn't watch that and be okay with it. They, they, they beat literally the devil out of them and at some point i had to kind of question the commander to say what's the evidence that these people are cultists and some of these people might be innocent and the level of brutality is almost like it's almost on the same scale as the people they say they are trying to catch so then you tend to wonder what's going on here and that piece that you saw in the dock was not the only time i went out with the vigilante i went out with them on another occasion and to see how sophisticated they are these vigilante they have they have people on ground. So it speaks to community policing where they know their own people. They know the nooks and cranny of the community. And so it's very easy for them to, you know, narrow down who these perpetrators are. All right. Now, can you share with us basically putting things in perspective, how deeply rooted, how, how critical is the issue of cultism because if if one when one was within the university system you 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 tend to see more of the activity there but when you're no longer within the university system sometimes it feels like uh, everything has gone away but we hear stories from here and there but talk to us how 
critical, how widely spread, or how critical, or how dangerous, or how serious these issues are in our society today? I think it's a national emergency. I think it's something that needs uh, a hearing in Parliament, at uh, the Senate. They need to have serious conversation because it's a problem. It's like a cancer, uh, and it's festering. So literally, we're working on gunpowder. Uh, you're aware of the case of Sylvester uh, recently. Mm -hmm. That's high school, and that's a posh high school. So even the children of the elite are not spared. The problem now is it's gone beyond uh, our institution. It's not in high school. Some people say even in primary school. But what makes it even more complex is, is within the society. You have your local plumber, your, your uh, Okada man, the local abateur. People call it all these guys saying they're cultists. I'm a year, I'm a year, clashing. You know, and what's tragic about it is these are people who grew up together within the same community. People who went to primary school together, who possibly, possibly used to be friends. But because of this allegiance with this uh, criminal organization, they bought heads and they killed each other in some of the most gruesome manner you can ever imagine. There was a lot of, of images that didn't make it to that documentary because of how vile they were. Wow. Uh, what was the most challenging part putting this video and this documentary project together? Can you share that with us? I mean, it was quite laborious. You know, first of all, we had to verify the documents we had, the cash of documents from the private investigator who had been watching the Black Axe for about a decade. And that's one of the reasons why we honed in on the Black Axe. It's not like we're not aware that there's other cult groups, AA Vikings, all that. But the evidence is what we what was was lacking. But in this case, you had evidence that mentioned names, that showed victims, that showed international uh, that showed uh, international fraud on the monuments monumental scale. And then you have the FBI and and the Italian authorities and the Interpol coming together to go and arrest a group of Nigerians in South Africa. So you know that this is not small game any longer. It's it's another level. And so it was quite difficult trying to piece everything together, but also getting access, you know, to those cold boys in Makoko, the ones in the other part of Lagos that we didn't reveal, and some other meetings that didn't make it to the final call because there's only so much you can put into a 52 minutes documentary. We possibly have enough for a series, but then we have to make editorial judgment what sells the story, and we have to balance it out and show other aspects. Otherwise, it will just be like a uh, a violence fest. Hmm. All right. Now, let me put you on hold. Uh, a lot of people have watched this uh, a, a video. Others haven't. Uh, let's play just a part of it, and then we will come back to uh, uh, talk more on this. Stay with us. I, I still put you on hold there, Peter. This deadly mafia. This is a major highway. People carrying guns, shooting each other. <laughs> How have they become so powerful? The security people supporting the talk. See them, see them. All right, uh, that's just one part of uh, that documentary. The point there is it, it's a 52-minute it's a documentary, and uh, you find time to watch it, and then everyone will get a perspective to what's going on in the society. I still have Peter McJob joining me, a BBC investigative reporter who put that together. Peter, now, in part of that documentary, there was someone who said that, uh, I know judgment will come, and all of that. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a touching moment, but yet we find these young boys going into doing whatever they do, uh, knowing that the end will come someday. What is their strongest drive from your engagement and all the questions you've been asking? I think what I first noticed is how vulnerable they are. Hmm. Forget the violence and the brutality. These people are traumatized. This is the first thing I saw. So those young men in Baraklava, when the mask came off after the interview, they didn't look so intimidating, you know. Especially at some point in the documentary, one of them got really tearful. I was asking probing questions. He didn't appreciate it. He actually almost threatened me to stop talking, you know, like, who do I, who do I think I am? challenging him and and goading him and i said i'm not goading you i'm trying to find out what's going on so that's the first thing i noticed how vulnerable these young men are and the trauma that most of them have been through so most of them joined either because a close family member had been murdered 
or because uh, uh, somebody close to them is a member of the cult. But when you look at a situation where uh, uh, a country like Nigeria, where over 90% are under the age of 18, uh, or, or about 22 million people in total have no job, and most of those people are young people with intelligence, with, with strength, with youth, with des when you are desperate, you, 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 uh, you adopt strange survival strategies, is what I've noticed. So for me, <clears throat> I feel like the, the key issue here, <clears throat> the key issue here is how do we, how do we as a society address this <clears throat> from a multiple angle? So it's not just a case of going after the cultists. We need to find out what is ex what is making them sign up for cultism, and one of the answers there is because the politicians uh, incentivize them with money. So it makes it easy that once you are brutal and you are forceful and you are aggressive, the level of your aggression is determines the level of your endearment to men in power. And that's why the vicious circle is going on the way it is. We need to preoccupy these young people with something else. Hmm. All right. One of them you spoke with uh, or you interviewed said government is involved. And in fact, he was very emphatic with the truth. Uh, and in your video, he took everyone to his room, showing some of the pictures he has snapped with some politicians and people in society and all of that. I, I, is this their, one of their strongest motivation? A, and besides that, how widespread is this when, you, when the involvement of politicians? Um, it's, quite, it's, quite, uh, it's quite robust because they use them for elections. In the case of the man you're talking about, Tony Kabaka, uh, he made it really clear that uh, if you're going to uh, uh, do an election in a dual state, you know, he, he has something to say about it. And when we followed him around the streets of Benin, there was clear evidence that this is a guy that wields a lot of influence within the community. So I think that's where he got all his success because he did say that in the last dispensation of Edo State, he was a tax collector for the government. And that's why he made all the money that he made. I and mean, his mansion was beautiful. So this is somebody who's made all that money from being uh, an enforcer, if you like, and openly admitted to be a member of the cult, the Black Axe or the NBM, as he called it. So it's, it's a problem there. But also, that's not the only place where they make their money. From my investigation, we, we found out that even uh, internationally, a lot of their money comes from fraud, a lot of internet fraud running into millions of dollars. You know, like, this is a new territory. It speaks to the, to, the, to the nature of the internet and how people are able to defraud, like, a lot of innocent, hapless people without you knowing that somebody somewhere is about to clean your account. And it's not just about losing money. This thing destroys people's lives. Mm. Completely, a lot of people's lives have been turned upside down because they made a mistake and somebody cleared their money out. So it's happening in different spheres. All you right. have the violence okay. on ground, you have the brutality, and then you have the fraud. Okay. Uh, well, Peter, uh, we must thank you very much for what you have done and what you're doing, and uh, we wish you well. I hope us exactly we'll, we'll find more time to talk about this and also to enlighten people. But the most important thing is people should watch that documentary and they will have a better perspective to what is going on. Thank you so much for uh, talking to us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you. Mm -hmm.